Hi, I'm Robin Openshaw, the green smoothie girl on the internet, and I have a confession. I thought I was a sugar addict as a teenager throughout my 20s and into my early 30s. I used to buy these 20-pound boxes of slightly healthier M&Ms, a brand name called Sunspire that the health food store would order for me, and I'd eat a handful of them by noon. But the handful of M&Ms weren't enough, so I'd eat a second handful and a third, and then I'd think about the M&Ms for the rest of the day anytime I didn't actually have them in my pocket and wasn't eating them. I wish I was done with this confession, but I'm not. There's more. When I got really sick from a pharmaceutical injury when I was 28, I didn't have any energy and I'd sleep for three hours a day, every day from 3 to 6 p.m. But before I went into my coma nap, I'd get out this box of chocolate frosting covered chocolate donuts I kept under my bed and I'd eat three of them. So right, so I ate three donuts a day. You can imagine how much shame I felt about all of that. And then there's what it did to my weight. And I probably wouldn't even be telling you any of this. I'd still just be in that sick cycle if I was even still alive, except that I haven't eaten a donut in decades and I haven't eaten M&Ms for that matter either. And I want to tell you why. It's not because I suddenly developed some willpower or I took an empowerment course. What I've discovered is that I wasn't even a sugar addict at all. I don't even think about sugar now and I don't eat it hardly ever. If I do, I'm good with like a couple bites of dessert in a restaurant after dinner, maybe a couple times a month. So the thing is, it's not you that is the sugar addict. You do have this yeast in your body called candida albicans. We all have it. It's normal to have candida in your body. We all coexist with it every day, and it might even have some positive functions in the body. The problem is when it starts growing out of control. So I wouldn't know this had I not solved the yeast problem, and it happened pretty accidentally. I wanted to get well from a pharma injury I suffered when I was 28 years old, and I did a detox hoping to get my energy back and my weight back to normal. I was really just wanting to feel better. I didn't want to sleep 14 to 15 hours a day like I did for years. Honestly, I would go into the mother's lounge at work and turn the light off and fall asleep on the couch and wake up two hours later almost every day. My boss was a guy, so of course he was unlikely to find out that I slept two hours during every workday in the women's bathroom. Somehow I got my work done, and somehow I didn't get fired. But as I detoxed my body to lose weight and feel better and not be chronically exhausted, another weird thing happened that I wasn't expecting. I quit craving sugar. I don't have any more willpower now than I did then, if I'm being honest. Now I understand it wasn't really me who had some kind of obsession with sugar. It was trillions of yeast spores screaming for their food that hijacked my mind. Now science knows more about the second brain in your gut or the gut brain connection. And so it's really strange that what happened in your gut takes over what you thought in your brain. And it makes you obsess about whatever kind of sugar that you become addicted to. Like for me, it was those stupid M&Ms and chocolate donuts, but that's what yeast eats. It eats sugar. And when it gets sugar, it makes more yeast. So you see how it's a really sick cycle, more yeast, more sugar, more sugar, more yeast, more hijacking in the brain to waste your brain power, fighting the urge to eat sugar instead of your brain being able to do more interesting and useful things. I'm telling you, it's not you, it's the yeast. And do you know what often puts your body into this imbalance where yeast gets the upper hand? It's antibiotics. They wipe out the healthy bacteria in the gut, which are keeping the normal amount of yeast in check. And so then the yeast goes crazy proliferating and you feel like you're the crazy one because you think about sugar all day, every day, and it might not be an antibiotic you just took last month. It might be years ago that this cycle started. So I just wanted you to know that you're not crazy. My obsession with sugar started in early adolescence when my mom had been putting me on an antibiotic every three months for strep throat. I haven't been on antibiotics the last 30 years, which is half my life now. And I love to teach people how to detoxify for a lot of reasons, but one is so that the yeast stays in check. And I also like to teach people how to get well in ways that don't involve antibiotics. These days, antibiotics don't even work that well because we've so overused them. So a lot of people get rid of some kind of infection or they don't 
because the antibiotic doesn't work. So you're prescribed a second course of antibiotics. And sometimes people are put on three different brands or more, and they end up with diarrhea for months or years and all kinds of other symptoms. My first husband once got an infection in his leg and he was on five different courses of antibiotics, oral, injected, and IV. And women will often notice that after one or more courses of antibiotics, the next thing that happens is a vaginal yeast infection. Now, I've never had one since learning how to deal with viruses and infections on my own without antibiotics so many years ago, but I have heard that they are absolutely miserable and hard to get rid of. And then when you're put on Diflucan, an antifungal, that causes headaches, nausea, diarrhea, rashes, all kinds of fun stuff. Do you see the pattern here? So let me show you how to detoxify. We really need to stop circling the drain. The average American is on an antibiotic once a year and often doesn't even realize the health problems that antibiotics cause, especially yeast. How can we stop growing yeast in our body and stop building up toxins in our organs and stop having more and more symptoms that doctors can't explain so that while they're trying to help, they just try to cover up the symptoms with drugs and then more drugs for the new symptoms that the first drugs caused. So let me show you how to detoxify. It isn't that hard. It does require you to watch a few short videos and learn what to eat, what to do, how to stop this endless circling of the drain. No more yeast, no more sugar cravings, no more misery. I'll share the video class with you.